and welcome to MGP 278. I'm Kev, and with me this week, there's Sheepdog and Pab. Say hello, boys and girls. Hello. Hello. One of you has to play the girl this week, because Anna's not here, because it's deadline week. Who's going to be the girl? Tell her it's not deadline week <coughs> until the end of January, and Jim White says so. Oh. Uh... I can't, I've got to avoid Jim White after I used him on a thumbnail the other day. I don't want to draw attention to <laughs> I don't, I don't want him to notice me anytime soon. Unless I, I don't want to have to send him any money. Uh, before we get too far into this, I do need to raise something with Pab. Yes. Five's a high number to count down from on the way into these shows. Oh, no, I, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> you regretted it, did you? The instant you started. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it took a, it took a long time to get to, to, get to one. Yeah. I, well. If you do that in future, if you go five and then you think, oh, no, I'm committed, we wouldn't mind if you just went five, three, one. Wow. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't going to say the two or the one. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a better record audio. Yeah, I'd just I'd just sit there waiting. I'm, yeah. I would refuse to speak. I can only start speaking after someone says one to me. That's the way I'm programmed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm recording that. I'm I should hope you yeah. bloody are. We've I'm started the show it. now. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm recording now, so you have to put up with my switch on, mate. Yeah, it's for 60 minutes, and then we switch back off again. Yeah. Yeah. You're How are we all on this fine week, anyway? Are we good? Whew. Yeah, very good. good. Cold, but I'm all right. I'm not cold. I'm lovely and toasty in my little garage with my yeah. curtains and my uh, my residue of all the cash I raised for charity because I'm a hero. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I haven't donated yet, actually. It's not too late, is it? Never too late, Sheepdog. Um, I, I, I'm glad you raised that. It's not too late for anybody to donate at this stage. To do so, you can just go to justgiving.com slash lelujo 2017 and you can add to the £4,100 that we've already raised when Just Giving is taken into account. Um, you should do that probably right now, each and every one of you. 2018? 2017. The year we're in. That's yeah. I thought I thought I'll make it current <laughs> rather than doing it in the future. Yeah, I, I might claim 2018 now though because I feel like I might need it. Although part of me think because I got on the uh, I got on the chart of highest fundraisers on there with this one. These pages stay open for two years. I might just reuse this one next year and just start <laughs> from <laughs> four grand and see how far we get then. <laughs> right. We're an hour into the stream. We've already raised four grand. Come on, let's keep going, going, going <laughs> and see if it just sets a precedent to get people excited and start throwing cash around. Do you uh, get to keep everything over the £1,000 target that you set? Well, I assumed that was how it worked. It, I, I, don't, I haven't received a cheque yet, so mm. I don't know. I, I assume it will reach me eventually, but I've not seen any of it yet, which is quite upsetting. Did, did, you, see, did you see my my donation you probably didn't did yeah you? it came in about 5 a.m didn't it yeah some weird time were you awake yeah, at that time? i woke up and i went shall i shall i message him is he going to want some some Pab, that was the point to? for the first time ever we nearly stopped i almost yeah. fell asleep at the keyboard i had yeah. a piece of toast about 5 a.m well, and it almost that's wrote it, me that's off. it you you went you disappeared to go on and you came back and you seemed better you yeah seemed i shower about it yeah, I yeah. went and had a shower so and felt like, much better. I'm going back to bed. I was like, I don't, I'll donate, and I'm going back to bed. <laughs> I, I would, he, he seemed fine. There was still like 180 people in there. I was like, me. He doesn't need me on this one. <laughs> yeah, they were keeping themselves entertained while I was having a shower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, all very splendid. Good stuff. It was a, a jolly good time was had by all, and lots of money was raised, and everyone's happy. And I slept for 13 hours that night. And goodness me, these 24-hour things have never been as hard as this one was. I don't know if it's because of the time of the year. I realise, because when we've done them in the past, it always starts to feel better when the sun comes up. The sun was only up for like four hours of the 24 hours. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yeah. I think I think for the, for the, for the, the 200th episode one that we were mentioning earlier on, we did it at like 8pm 8, 8 to 8pm, didn't we? Yeah, so you have so, most of the, which yeah. seems stupid starting at the end of a full day, but at least then once you get through the night, the la- the last 12 hours of the show, you're fine. It's normal daytime. But for this one, oy, 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 it was I, from about 4 a.m. through to I had that shower about 7. I mm. was practically asleep at the keyboard. It was It was absolutely brutal. But 
Don't worry, I survived. I'm here now. Hello. What night did you do it? Saturday last week. Saturday night into Sunday. I'd have been getting drunk in... Uh... There doesn't need to be a location. We yeah. all know yeah. it was... Oh, it was in the evening, was it? I would have been getting drunk. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I I didn't realise you were even doing it until you mentioned it, um, whenever well, you the, did. On the podcast last week. Yeah, oh, was it right at the end you mentioned it, actually? No, it was off the show, wasn't it? No, I mentioned it quite a lot on the show. There were some of our darling listeners came on and made donations. Remember I, I assume... turned up late. Uh, I, I assume some of the people who came in and made no do- donations from here um, don't also watch my videos, because if they do, they've been absent for two years in the comments. But I recognise some names I haven't seen for a while who appeared yeah. on the donation thing. So I think some people made it over from the podcast. Yeah, I'm looking down the list. Harry Hill, the TV comedian, donated a fiver. Oh, good old Harry. The uh, That internet group Anonymous donated loads of money. Oh, yeah, about. they did, actually. I can see that. And, uh they did it in five pound chunks. Maybe it's like Walter White, uh, his yeah. donation thing. It's all just money laundering. But it was, uh, it was all very splendid. Why were you, <laughs> as if you need a reason, why were you getting drunk this time, Sheepdog? <laughs> um, I, I was uh, on my, my um, annual lads weekend away with my friends from school, um, just having adventures and stuff. We uh, we went to uh, Cornwall on the Saturday when you were slaving over a charity feed. I was playing foot golf, which is uh, my favourite sport of all time. Doesn't um, sound real. You'd enjoy it. I genuinely think you'd enjoy it. We were on a golf course with footballs, and the golf holes were bigger. I should hope so. Or else it would be a very, very challenging game. <laughs> um, the one we were on, every hole was a par three, so it shouldn't have been very challenging. Um, I went first on the first hole. I, I, I sort of put put the ball down. I, I took a little run up and just sliced it at a right angle to my right. Um, it took me eight attempts to get it in that first hole. Until that first kick, when was the previous time you'd kicked a football? Um last year maybe <laughs> or or in the car park at this place like i was kicking the ball around but um no i was a little bit shocked when i sliced it because i kind of just thought it's kicking a ball from a to b like even if i don't kick it very hard um i'll get it straight but no i was terrible i mean on on the um on the second hole and so forth um i was fine it was good every hole was either you know so one or two holes, I got like two out of three, and then um, other ones I, I got like four and five. So it wasn't too bad. It was just that for that first one, I was a bit too confident. Um, I, I just expected it to go where I was looking, and it didn't. Um, one of my mates got a hole in one and had to buy us all around, which was good. Um, it was quite funny watching him try and do a lap of the golf course um, and tripping over at the first hole he ran past. Um, that's everyone piled on top of him. But um, no, I, I mean, it was quite a golf between me and the person who came first. I think I did the course in something like 82 shots um, and he did the course in like 68 shots. So there's about, what, a 14 swing. Um I suppose it doesn't sound many on an 18 hole. Especially if you took 10 to do the first go. Yeah. That That's sounds I mean. like you're fairly level for the rest of the day. Yeah. But first hole I mean. doesn't count, everybody. Well, that was the thing, though. My, my mate who got a hole in one went from like one of the worst players to one of the best over, over that because it was like hole 14. And then he did all right for the rest of it because he was feeling so confident. Um, I probably got a bit better towards the end because I realized it was me versus another friend for the wooden spoon. But as you say, we were all of a very, very even uh, level. But for the fact that one guy like played a lot of football when he was younger and was a goalkeeper. So kicking the ball far and landing it where he wants to land it is pretty much all they do, isn't it? Um, other than catching the ball, of course. Um, yeah, <laughs> so... I, when you said he was a goalkeeper, I had visions of him chasing every kick and catching it as you were kicking it. <laughs> like <a dog. laughs> Will you stop it? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was just really good at putting it down and just like taking a goal kick each time. Um, I was wearing big as well, whereas he was wearing trainers, so I reckon that was probably part of it. Um, I just thought it would be easier for me to kick it if I was wearing boots. Um, 
just the wrong type. But no, I want to play that with you two. I think we'd enjoy it. I think it'd be a laugh. Well, um, I was saying to Pab before the show that I'm just going to turn up at his house at some point now. I've got his address. So if yes. we grab grab a bag of footballs, we can drive up there tomorrow and just knock on yeah. his door. Pab, look at Pab, come out place. to play, please. There's a football foot golf place near me. Oh, well, we'll where is one? We'll okay. be there tomorrow. With that, um, then. let's just get in Kev's car. We'll, we'll come up, do a day of that. Drunk in the golf house, the clubhouse, whatever it's called. Yeah, let's oh. do that. <laughs> we should get the listeners all involved and have a proper golf tournament. But foot golf. Yeah, I was going to say, let's not overuse the word proper there. Let's have a, pro- <laughs> a proper golf tournament with football. Um, yeah, I if agree. We, if, let's I do know. it. Make it's it happen. The, we make this the Ryder Cup of foot golf. Yeah, let's do um, it on the 25th of December because I've got nothing <laughs> else on that day because, as usual, my Christmas seems to be falling on the 26th this year. So 25th, I'm completely free. So let's all head up to Pab's house then. Is that a convenient day for us to come, Pab? Um, not good. Really convenient for me. It's all right for me, but it might not be open, the, the golf club. All the better. We get I'll in have for to free. Ask. I'll have to ask. We'll just climb the fence. I don't think there's a fence. I think it's just a field. I was rather surprised they said to us just drop the balls off at reception on your way out. And like we hadn't been to a reception. So um, I just didn't know what they were on about. And I kept thinking, well, I'll just take all eight balls to my mate's car. But, um, boot it, in the, boot it but in the lake and then run off. Tell you what was good value as well is the whole thing cost something like £15 each. But what you're actually paying for was a full, a, a large pizza and a pint of uh, alcohol at the end. Um, so you had like gin, real golf. presumably. I had, a, I had a, uh, a lager, but I should have asked. As I, as I was asking for the lager, I did think of Pumba. <laughs> right, Pat, what, what, what's your adventure this week been? It seems we're just chatting. Not... It's almost as if we've got no video games to talk about, so let's just chat about our, our weeks. I've not got anything to talk about, realistically. I've just I've been so busy at work, I've not done anything, like anything adventurous. Come on now. The most adventurous thing was going to the post office last weekend. And how was that? Was you've, that got, right? you've got 10 minutes. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see any animals on the way? No. No. The story no. sucks. It, it wasn't yeah. interested in any way, shape, or form. It's just a very quiet week. Come on, Pab. You've had a week to prepare for this. You could have yeah. you could have at least had an adventure. Hang about. You've done what? It was a board game. Does that count? Not really. You played a board mm. game, okay? Go on. Um, I, I play. I play a lot of board games, but my friend is like a board game connoisseur, collectory type. You know, nerd has and, a uh, simplified version of that phrase. He, he asked his um, group that he usually goes and plays games with what game he should bring, what game he should buy and bring to this weekend away, um, and that there were seven of us, and uh, they said we should get the game Seven Wonders. Um, where you're a leader of uh, one of the seven great cities of the ancient world. And um, you basically just spend the game gathering resources, developing your little civilization, um, building your military, uh, you know, build, deciding what buildings you'll have and that sort of thing. You make you make decisions of what your, your little civilization should have. Um, and then at the end of the game, it kind of, you compare <laughs> and it's it, it's much more fun than it sounds you have like cards that you have to so you get dealt seven cards you pick one and then you pass your hand to the person next to you uh, you're only allowed to trade with the people to your left and right um so they they only get the cards you've already seen and they and you only get the cards they've already seen so it's like you can look at your mate's civilization and stitch them up and and you know if you if you start building up your military then everybody like the people next to you and the people next to them are kind of forced to start building their military up because at the end of every round you have a a war and you know they lose points if their military is not as strong as yours and that kind of thing. So it had lots of like little bits and bobs to it. We played that twice over the weekend. I was there. Um, I, I game because to my right was like a tyrant who had the biggest army on the left was someone who just didn't have any resources to trade with so um i just kind of sat there twiddling thumbs and getting drunk but on the the second time we played it i understood the game better and um i won by by quite a lot which is cool um i was wondering i kept thinking would you enjoy it i'm not I, part of me's not sure because 
I liked it. It reminded me of Age of Empires and Civilization and games like that. Um, apparently, there's a lot of expansions to it that make it even more like intricate and clever and whatnot. But I kind of thought if I got this and we were playing it on a night out, I think you and Anna and Pab would probably get bored. No, um, it might be. It's right probably right. not. I'm slowly creeping into the world of ga- board games. Mm. Uh, See, I wondered. I thought. Uh, more into it than Kev. I didn't think Kev would be very into it. Um, if it takes longer than about 15 minutes, I'm not interested. It took about 45, which oh. for a board game, for a board game, I when he said it out, I thought, oh, dear Lord, this is the next eight hours we're covering off. Um, explaining it to us made it take longer. I think we, we Well, the first time we played it, it took us an hour and a half because we probably spent about an hour um, getting used to it. But the second time, we blitzed through it. So I'm saying 45 minutes is probably more like half an hour. Um, apparently, it's the highest ranking game in all the... when people put together board game foundations yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Um, and there's, there are so many expansions. I'm just looking at it now. There's, there's Ruins, Myths, More Wonders, Lost Wonders... Game wonders. <laughs> it's just like all the different types of wonders you can think of. Stevie Wonder. Um <laughs> before somebody else did. Um but yeah, I it's making me think I want more board games. I, I don't think I could play this with my my kids. Um I'm trying to find an age rating for it because a uh, ten plus it's saying. Um I got Game of Life the other day, thinking that'd be a fun one to play with my kids. So another board game I played, but uh, the new version of that's a little bit different to the one I remember playing. It was still fun. I kind of kept rolling tens, so uh, I lived, lived a very short life, which <laughs> it was quite eerie because I got married and had kids quite young in the game. I had exactly the amount of children I have in exactly the order I have them. So a girl and two boys, um, the house and the car and everything after that. And then just kind of went straight through to retirement. I ended up on Millionaire's Row. So I was kind of, well, although you, you kind of just have a choice between that or the other one anyway. But um, my wife lived a heck of a lot longer than I did. <laughs> so I'm kind of surprised nobody. Yeah. But um, I know that's not really, so like any proper board game players listening will be kind of like, well, they're, they're two different ends of the spectrum. But I'm just thinking if I can try and get my family into the habit of playing these often. Mm, yeah creeping in the new the newer better games as we go um you know we grab double and uh exploding kittens and um super fight and uh cards against humanity and we've got all of them but obviously i can't play cards against humanity with the kids and that kind of gets boring once you've played it with the same group a couple of times doesn't it yeah yeah i can see that i've had a bit of a board game week um also, one one last proper gaming thing, and uh, but uh, Kev will sigh in a moment. Um, oh. The new generation of Pokemon is out tonight on the Pokemon Go. Is it? So there's 50 new Pokemon out. Are you caught them um, all yet? I considered getting in the car and going out, but it's cold. Um, oh, my son was so cute. I love it. I, I live for I live for seeing him react to the new updates. Um, I got a little picture of him pointing at the phone with delight on his face. Um, which is worth it for itself. But um, it's a bit frustrating. I only needed to get two more to complete it, and now there's 40 more to, or 48 more to get. Sounds like um, you need to try a bit harder in future. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm glad, obviously, because I think I would have stopped playing it if I'd got, caught, caught them all, um, giving me a bit more to go at. Um, I'm very happy. I had a great little week of just doing different things and... I worked out that I was in my car driving for about 25 hours this week. Wow. That's a day of my week, a full day driving. Good. Good. (laughs) Yeah, it's about time you had a constructive day. I spent a whole day raising money for charity. (laughs) What did you spend a whole day doing? Are we getting back to the post office again? No, that was about 10 minutes. Was it? 10 minutes Sounds like a good day, post but... office. That's better than any post office I go to. Yeah, yeah you, go, you go early on a, on a Saturday morning. There's not I don't do there. anything early on a Saturday morning. Exactly. Which is why I, I post this stuff to the PO box and not direct to you. Good choice. Yeah. Right. Have, have we got any actual video games to talk about this do. week? Of course we do. Oh, good. Well, loads of games. Do you want me to just get cracking? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. So, uh, Wolfenstein 2... 
uh, I mentioned it last week. I finished that game now. Um, boy, does that that game go places? Germany. Uh, sorry, Germany. No, not Germany. I don't want to go to Germany. America. Yeah, it's it's a lot of it's set in America because it's it's set after it's set like in the sixties. And yeah, it's, I realised like after I'd sent it that I'd forgotten it was set after. It's an alternate universe where the the, the the Germans won, the Nazis won, and they've taken over America and live and you're going back into that society trying to infiltrate and so what have you. But yeah, there there are probably about at least half a dozen moments in that, that game where I was just just shocked at what was going on. I was like, What? What I can't believe that's happening. There's so many like insane moments in that story. Um, the shooting is isn't isn't the best in that game, um, and I I had it put down to the lowest difficulty because I wasn't enjoying myself playing it on standard difficulty. I mean, the people playing it there's like six or seven difficulties, and the standard one is the second difficulty on the list. If anyone playing it above that, you just must be play, banging right against the wall because it is really punishing. Um, like I say, I enjoyed it most just playing it on the easiest level. Just rattling for everybody, clearing them all out. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a bit... Hmm. I thought initially that the game ended a bit anticlimactic. Um, but I think it ended quite well for the story. Anna was saying this about it that she didn't, she wasn't certain that it had ended. It was a bit weird the way it ended. Yeah, I think the teen up for a third. I think they set it set up well for a third. Um, and hopefully they'll get a, they'll get a chance at doing a third. I know that the sales haven't been amazing for it. The sales really, are, I'm surprised. I thought the first one was so well received. But, but they, yeah, but they they dropped it on the same day as Assassin's Creed and Super Mario Odyssey. All right, I was going to, I was raising an eyebrow for Assassin's Creed, but um, yeah, People Mario. Love it, don't they? People love Assassin's Creed, don't they? They're the hardcore Assassin's Creed fans. Um, and like I say, the, it's, I, I, I mean, I got it like the last week or week before in the Black Friday sales for 25 quid, and I know it dropped down for as low as about 18 quid for a game that's, that would been out for less than a month. It's, it's insane just to drop down that low so quick. So I don't know whether. They did that just because they get to get you know they get the numbers up and get copies out the door, but but it's a it's a truly brilliant game. It's, it, I, if you find it cheap, I'd give this a shot uh, without a doubt. I mean, especially with Call of Duty, which uh, from what I've been listening to recently on some other podcasts, that the the campaign for Call of Duty is just a bit bland, a bit average. And they always places. say. No, some the last few have been quite good. The last few have been uh, I know Advanced Warfare was good. And last year's Infinite Warfare was supposed to be a good one as well. What I from what I played of Infinite Warfare, I really enjoyed it. Um but apparently this one's just a very I mean, I don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's probably still probably quite good. But it's just a bit bland and when you've got a choice of two like Nazi killing like World War Two style shooters I think Wolfenstein's the way to go at the minute. I know you get the multiplayer and stuff, and that's what a lot of people go to Call of Duty for these days, don't they? The multiplayer. Um, that's the reason I'm interested in it, because I've, I've won some old-school Call of Duty multiplayer. But, yeah, definitely, definitely worth a look, Wolfenstein 2. Um, what else have I played? What else have I played? I've played a little game called Nex Machina. Uh, you probably none of you have heard of this, have you? Never heard of it. No, no. I got the the latest humble monthly bundle because I'm subscribed to that now. Um, and it it, it gave me a. It's probably the best humble monthly bundle I've had in a long time. It, it gave, I I very I rarely get humble monthlies, and they give you like eight, like six to eight games or something like that. And there's like one standout, and the rest are like just kind of like oh, I'm not really interested in them. And I'm sure lots of people do enjoy them and love them sort of games, but like there's four games I just instantly installed, which is rare for me for these things. Um, and Next Machina is one of them. Um, now this is from the company Housemark, who made Housemark made the 
what was that release game that came out on PS4? The oh lordy, I've forgotten what it's called now. It was the the game where you had the it was like sort of like not Space Invaders, but you know where you're on like a, on a cylindrical grid. You're not going to know, is he? Resogun. Resogun, that's the one. The people that made oh, Resogun and uh, Super, Super Stardust and all them sort of games. So it's twin stick shooter sort of thing, and you go around this world. You know, and it's it's like um, it reminded me of like Mario Galaxy, the way it was the way it was played. Because you play like a you play like a little small area. You've got to clear all the enemies and collect all the all the um, all the civilians that you need to pick up, and then you sort of like warp around to like another side of the side of the um, like the planet sort of thing, and you walk around and you do the same on there, and then you go around again and you do there. Um, it's really much an arcade twin stick shooter. Um, it just looks amazing. It looks it's a really pretty game. Loads of like like Resogun was Re- Resogun had lots of like um, flair and like pixel pixel effects. Um, but yeah, it was I just really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna carry on playing it because it's it's a nifty little game. It's like just pick up and play, do like 10, 15 minutes here and there. Um, and I'm, the only thing I'm down about is that at the minute I can't see a way to just play the levels. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not looking where I need to look. The only option I found was like an arcade mode where it's just you just go in the game and you just start from level one and off you go, and you have like ninety nine lives, and off you go. Just go and do it, which is fine. But when you want to actually just beat a, when you want to finish like a work like four levels or whatever it is, and you stop, you can't go back to where you finish. You have to start again from the beginning every time. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know if I want to do that every time just to see the see the full what the full content of this game. I'm, I'm probably wrong because that seems really wrong to do that. That doesn't seem right to me to, that you have to keep playing the entire content of the game to get see any more of it. Um. So yeah, I'll have to look around in the that's, menus. And see that's how things were back in the past, weren't they? Yeah, that's what I mean. And it's it the the house mark of have always been like a very much a, an old school arcade shooter kind of people. And like it said, like th- this mode that you have 99 lives. Um, oh, you can set it up. You can set it up to like, like three lives. You can set it up to however many lives you want, I think. And that's it. It's just set, set, set to 99 and you go, okay, I'll have that. Um, and I don't know what happens if you get down to zero, but I mean, you've got 99 lives to complete the game. Um, but I don't know. It's just, I like it. I do like it. It's a cool game. Um, but if it if it doesn't have any sort of level progression system where I could just pick in up, jump in and jump out, I might have to stop playing it after after a while because it's it's not something I can commit to like an entire day to just to complete the game. I'm not gonna. I'm not that sort of person to play games for that long. Uh, so what else have I played? Now, the old favorite, Destiny Two. The new DLCs out. The latest. Yeah, DLC I've uh, I've completed it already. Yeah, yep. that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, the Curse of Osiris came out on Tuesday, around six o'clock ish on Tuesday. By Wednesday, of around eight o'clock ish, I'd finished it. Um, that's all the main story stuff. There's still some bits and bobs going on in there. Um, it's a new planet, Mercury. Uh, the whole the whole story I thing is it's kind been of around cool. for a while. Yeah, no, but it's, it's not been you're not been able to go to it in, in Destiny. Um, and it's it's in and what have you. And the story stuff was good from what I got, but it was like it was probably no more than maybe I want to say two or three hours worth of content from a story. And considering. I paid thirty quid for like an expansion pass, the season pass. I mean, I know I get another seat, another expansion out of that. I was like, "That's kind, of, that's not great." Um, and the world itself, Mercury, it isn't a great planet to be on. There's not much going. It's like a, it's like a small area. It's a tiny area compared to the other worlds that you go to in Destiny. So I'm a little bit disappointed with it, to be honest with you. <clears throat> I'm enjoying all the there's like all new loot and your your levels are. Ha- uh, no higher. I think you, you can now go to level twenty five instead of twenty, and the power levels raised to three thirty five instead of three oh five. So, so that 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 grind is back on again to get to the highest level. Um, there's another part of the raid. There's a whole new, there's a new room in the raid, like a new section of it, 
from from this new DLC. Um, I will need to finish the actual raid before we actually get to that, but that's another incentive to go and do some more raiding. Um, yeah, I, I just kind of like going on Destiny. Just at the minute, I just go on it and just go and shoot some shoot some alien things, and then come off it again. I'm like, okay, yeah. And this game still is still destiny, it's still good to shoot, it still feels good to shoot stuff. Um and yeah, that's about it really. That is pretty much all I've played all week. Because I've just been sloppy. In, yeah, sloppy. I've just been in, enthralled in this Destiny 2 stuff because it is new. Um and it's it's kind of pushed me back in, pushed me back into Destiny. Where I was just sort of just sort of dipping my way out of it, I was sort of getting myself off of Destiny. I've gone back to Player Unknown this week. Actually, I've played a game of Player Unknown again, first time in. Right, I need to ask you about you know. this because it comes yeah. out on Xbox anytime now, doesn't it? Uh huh. Uh huh. I've got it. Should, yeah. sh- should I be getting it? Um, m- my instant reaction to say that to you would be no. Um, not that then. I, I, I only because. I don't necessarily know how I I don't know what it's going to be like because I I don't know how this is going to control on the on a controller. You you might get on it, and you might be fine. You might get on it, and you you'll just get snipes from a mile away, and that's what happens a lot of the time in this game on PC. A lot of the time, I'm getting killed by the Invisible Man. I don't know who killed me. Just someone in the distance killed me. I'm like, oh I, no, this oh. sounds horrible. Not interested. I, I don't know. I just don't know. I think that. As in, like you what you want it to make content with? No, 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 just to play it. Just to play it, I would say probably not. Probably not. I shall not I mean, bother. I, I, I've got it. I've got it because I want to see what it's like playing with a controller. Because I know I'd be better at it with a con- controller than a um, mouse and keyboard. Even though I've got quite proficient at it, playing it all these hours on the on the PC. Um, but yeah, one. Uh, what is it now? The new the. Xbox versions out on Tuesday, and the full version out of early access is coming out on the twentieth of December. Uh, the new map's gone into de- into player unknown. This I think today actually of recording Friday, it, the new desert map has gone in. It seems wild, it seems insane. It's a bit smaller, so it's snugger, a bit like there's a lot more compact. Um, but it's a lot more buildings and hills and things from what I've seen, so I'm interested to go back into that and see what it's like. Um, I don't know. It's I've I was just going back. I've played one game this week. Um, didn't do very much in it. Just ran around, and got killed. And okay, yep, yeah, this is still what it is. Um, so I'll be interested to see what it what it plays like next week when I get it on Xbox, and I'll be able to report back next week on it. See where we're at. Splendid. I shall hold fire for now then. Yeah. So, any more video games from anybody? Obviously, I just football man talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it because if people want to know, they could watch the videos. Goose darn it! Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no more from me. I play Football Manager too, but no. You should get the new one, Sheepdog. If you're only on two. Mm-hmm. Um, what about movies and television shows, then, gentlemen? I I, I haven't watched any because I've been a busy boy. <laughs> yeah, I ate my words on. Slating the Arrowverse stuff earlier, I did a little article because um, I said that it was, and it's actually had a really, really good uh, two weeks in a row. I said last week the crossover yeah. was really good, and then all of their mid-season finales have been outstanding. Um, I know that's kind of the Walking Dead model of, you know, having a great start, a great middle end, and a, you know, just doing four good episodes and the rest filler. But no, I think they've. Um, this year with with the cliffhangers I've got, um, I'd say Super Go and Flash have got really high level cliffhangers, enough to keep it entertaining and good. And um, Legends of Tomorrow was just really entertaining, so good on them. I've had a good week for TV. Um, a bit mental, but it always does. Um, we haven't interview. watched that yet because um, I'm trying to convince Anna that we should watch it at some point, but. I think she's very close to being completely done with it. Yeah, it wasn't. It's, it wasn't good, but it was all right. <laughs> again, as always. 
yeah. while you talk about what you've watched, I'm just going to grab a wire to plug my my laptop in because it's it's on five percent battery. Okay. Um, I have watched what? nothing, Pab. You watched nothing, nothing at all. I don't watch TV. I don't have time. Admittedly, I don't watch anything. I watch. Mm. This t- the TV segment's basically sheep. I, what, I don't I know why he's no, left. I, I've, watched, I've watched a few bit. I'll tell you what we can talk about. What's that? This, this Spotify thing. Ha! What about it? Thing. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. I saw yours and I went, oh, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have a look at this. It's not great from, from mine, if I'm honest with you. Has yours got the chicken song as number one like mine no, did? No, no. I didn't look at mine because mine said most most like album played or whatever it was best like most group played was the Glee like, Glee cast. And I was like, what? that sounds about right. I don't remember that happening ever. Uh, it's like, all you ever listened to when we we're with you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind occasionally that like, the odd song, but I, was like, I don't remember that. I don't remember how that's. There's a lot of weird stuff on there, and my thing was something like my biggest category, most used category was something like teen pop. Like, yeah, this sounds legit. Yeah, yeah we've all met like you. Me. Yeah. yeah. Does that sound like me? Yeah, it does, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, really? It's like, I saw yours and I was like, yeah, mine will probably be something like that. I was like, Teen Pop? Where did that mine. come from? My, mine was just cool because I'm a cool guy. Yeah, well, I was hoping mine would be cool because I, I, I don't know. I, I'd listened to like stuff like Stevie Wonder and stuff like that. I was like, that, that's not Teen Pop. I don't know <laughs> where the Teen Pops come from. Because of all that teen pop you listen to. Yeah. I don't You've know always got is, Selena Gomez on. I don't know. That's the thing. I really don't. I don't know where it's come from. You've got a Selena me. Gomez calendar. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. You're always no, wearing no, no, Glee no. t-shirts when you come to events. If you had a Glee t-shirt, I would wear it. And you'd have seen it by now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I missed there, but all over Selena Gomez and Glee. Pab- Pab's year-end Spotify thing um, told him that he'd been listening to Teen Pop and the Glee soundtrack more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what my most listened to song this year was? Yeah. It was what? the main song from Moana. <laughs> well, my, mine was understand. the chicken song off of Orange is the New Black. I was like, really? I think it's because on long journeys, that's what we play for my daughter. Um, yeah. That's all right. I mean, my second most played one was like um, Wolf Alice's new song that's all over the radio, which is in my head quite often. So the Fair Glee enough, people that, are very sexist. They don't do Glee t-shirts for adult men. Don't there's loads of women's ones. There's loads of kids' ones. You just said if you had a Glee t-shirt, you you'd have dare. worn it, and we'd have no. seen it by now. No, I said, so I'm, I'm fixing that problem. No, don't fix any problem. There's no problem in this whatsoever. Why don't you make him one? I might do. There's eat, sleep, choir, repeat. I might get him that one. (laughs) I um, Um, remember the film... Sorry, we talk about TV shows. No, I can do in a bit, but go on. I remember the um, film I'd watched. Well, um, my friends put it on and I was very dubious that it was going to be any good. Um, I actually thought they'd put it on because the main women in it were very, very attractive um, and and uh, there'd been word that one of well that both of them would be seen nude at some point in the oh. film, so I was a little bit like, oh, here we go, like, okay, sure, I appreciate the fact they're attractive, and I'm sure it'll be fun to see, but this is two hours of my life I'm never going to get back, um, so I was a little bit miffed. But then it turned out to be an extraordinarily good film. It was uh, Keanu Reeves, is a married man. Um, an architect, and he played a wooden, boring man like he always does. But um, his missus and kids go away for a weekend, and he's left to do some work on his own. And uh, just like the title of the film, Kev, it's very clever. There's a knock, knock at the door, and um, he answers it. And there's these two women standing in the pouring rain, and they're like, "We, you know, our taxi driver dropped us off here. We we're wandering around in the rain for two hours. We don't know where we are. We don't know, you know, who you know, we're supposed to be going to a party, and the people aren't here." Um, we're completely lost. Can we come in and call a taxi? And when they come in, um, it just ensues from there that he offers to to give them a change of clothes and call them an Uber. The Uber's not going to come for another hour. Um, they're chatting away to him, learning a bit more about him, and then they start seducing him and basically end up... I was going to say, they offer to uh, you know have a threesome with him, um, and he accepts because they're very attractive. They're already pretty much naked, and he doesn't see there being any kind of consequences to his actions. But then, because it's a film, 
and it's the point of the film they they turn out to be mental and turn on him and teach him the error of his ways and um they're very very vicious it's a, it's absolutely batshit crazy um they basically destroy his life for for agreeing to have a threesome with them that they initiated um and it was it was just one of those films where i just thought i didn't do it justice explaining it just then i recommend it. it's on netflix um it was just really entertaining because you just thought, what the hell is their motive? Why are they doing this to him? And, you know, it kind of unfolds in the film, um, you know, why they're doing it and whatever. It's a bit like a, an R-rated Black Mirror um, episode almost, I'd say. Uh, again, I've not done it justice because I've, I think I probably, I didn't know what my mates did. I summed it up as they get nude in it, but they are very attractive women. So it's worth the entrance. That's worth it on its own. Um but beyond that, very good plot, very good film. You should watch it. I'm surprised it's not more well known because it's the first time I've seen Keanu Reeves in a film and thought, whilst his acting was terrible, he was all right as the character. I mean, there's a point where he just starts shouting what and why and flipping out and it's so unconvincing and hilarious that, again, that's worth worth watching on its own because it's he, he can't act, bless him. He's, he's just a, a <laughs> bad actor. He shouldn't be given jobs in Hollywood. But um, I was surprised to find that one of the women he sleeps with is also the director's wife in real life. What? So this guy directed a film where his own wife sleeps with Keanu Reeves. Um, Sounds like <laughs> a favour for his wife there. That's what I thought. That's a birthday present, isn't it? It's just like, who do you want to, <laughs> who do you want to sleep with? Um, but the other woman, her friend, um, very attractive and um, bizarre. And I kept winding my mates up because she barked like a dog randomly in the film. Um, I can't remember why. Um, and so I just kept doing that every now and again. They're like, stop it. Like you're ruining the sexiness of the woman by, by barking like she did. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm only doing it to annoy you. Um, but yeah, that was called knock knock and it's on Netflix. I think it's only about an hour and a half long. Um, and it is worth mm. it. Um, they also put on Watchmen, which I'd, I'd only seen the first forty-five minutes of. Really? Wow. Now I've it's, it's like a three-hour film, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I've seen about two and a bit hours of it. We didn't watch all of it. Um, it's just I think it's just too long for me to watch in one sitting. But things distract it. Um, it's better cool. the second time through, I think. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll watch it a third time now, and I reckon I'll, I'll really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, and finish it um and we also watched uh sex drive which again i was like for god's i mean that one i sat like a grumpy old man in for most of it because i was just really miffed that this basic film um was being put on but it was entertaining it's just like all these kid movies like you know teen movies he went on a bit of a road trip to meet a woman he'd been talking to on the internet purely with the aim of having sex um I just thought it sounded like absolute trash, but it had some good funny moments to it. So again, I'd say if you're into that kind of film, check it out. I wouldn't suggest it to like my wife or I don't think Kev would particularly like it, but um, yeah, it filled about an hour and a half again of one of the evenings. My friends are a bit obsessed with films basically. So they just put on literally anything and they've seen all the big films. So when they put something on they've not seen, it's usually scraping the barrel quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so you un- you uncover some gems like like last time I went over, we watched. I think it was I watched the Scarlet. What's what's Black Widow's name? Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, uh, she's in a film. Is it called Lucy or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We watched that last time That's we went right. away, and that was a good film. Mm. You pick some decent ones. It's just yeah, they seem to just pick. Uh, a weird psychotic horror thriller and a uh, road trip movie. So <laughs> two, two stark ends of the spectrum, but worth watching. Excellent. Excellent sheep. Dog. Ended. Um, are we moving? No, oh, no, no, have, you, no, no, no. have you got something? You said yeah. you didn't have anything when he was away. Do you want to talk about South Park? No, I don't. Exactly. Continue. Go about your exactly. business. <laughs> so I have, I've in the bid to, Start the uh, the fractured butthole. I thought I need to get caught up on current South Park. Yeah. Uh, so I've watched all of series nineteen and series twenty this week. You've uh, watched two full seasons of a TV yeah, show. Right? Ten, episodes, ten episodes each at twenty minutes an episode. It's not that long. Okay. Yeah. Um, How many minutes is that, Kevin? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, it's two hundred or so. Yeah, it's it's 
season 19, I think it's the, they've both been great seasons. Season 19 is the PC Principal series season. Really? Where, I suppose you're only in 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PC so Principal. Season, PC right. Principal. Yeah, so cool. Such a funny, funny season. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy it. And then season 20 is like the, the member berries. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just thought the member berries, everyone talks about the member berries when it came out. And I thought it was just like a, like a one episode thing, but it's a whole arc in the in the whole season. It's a whole re- reoccurring yeah. thing, isn't it, that goes on through the season. Um, yeah. And that's what I liked about the, both the, like 19 when Peace Principal came in and they had like the regentrification of South Park and whatever, and they're getting the Whole Foods and. And then um, Randy clearly becoming, becoming PC. Trump, like, and I clearly didn't think Trump would win the election. Yes, yeah. And they, they were all prepped for that. And then they, yeah. like, they were like, said to scramble, didn't they? And change mm-hmm. the episode because they had it all set to go. And then he, he won. And then <laughs> it's been brilliant because it's just like, I, I, I was, I absolutely loved that how uh, like every story would just end with Mr. Garrison being like, oh, geez. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, it, fucking up, and then out of nowhere, Trump wins in real life, and they've had to just elect him. And so I think they'd planned on that being the end of the whole sort of no more talking about that, and then they've had to kind of bring it on to later seasons. Which yeah, yeah, every week let's let's bash Trump a bit more, but they they do tend to talk about Trump. He every can't now help again. it though; he does it to himself. And so that it's like it's like you can't help it. He's like there's, he's doing stupid stuff. He is uh, a South Park parody not... of himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's just, you're, he's asking for it from South Park. Mm. South Park going to rip him, come what may, but when he's doing stupid stuff, it's going to happen even more. Um, Our friend has been really good as well. Um, he had a bit of a dip this season. I, I'm about 10 episodes in. And um, I think they sort of started to run out of ideas with the girlfriend and then they've just started rounding it off again, which is which has been decent. Um uh, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. that start of the season with her was good. Yeah, I, I do want to. Um, like, I was going to start season twenty one over the weekend, maybe. Um, but I don't know how far. I, don't, I just want. I just wanted to be in the loop, sort of thing, for because I know they're going to mention stuff in the fractured butthole that that's going to be oh, relevant yeah. to this yeah. to these season. And I'm like, I don't want to go there going. It's I mean, you collect. Funny, but I don't get the references. Do you? Is that what you do. And so, um, the whole is it Tweak and Craig at one point Tweak they're Craig, made, yeah, yeah. They're almost because everybody's so PC. They essentially convince two eight year olds to become um, like boyfriend and boyfriend Kev, because um, yes. everyone's trying to be so accepting. Yeah, because of, of the, the, they're not Japanese, gay, but, yeah. Japanese, Japanese kid, uh, Japanese girls are uh, draw, drawing them both as as gay as a gay couple, and so everyone just goes, "Oh, it's, it's fine, it's all right," and they're going, "What well, we're not." And then it becomes a thing they just, they just accept it and just like, it's like okay, let's just let's just stop fighting it and just get on with it. And they kept, so everyone, the, kept, the everyone kept giving them money. Yeah, in the game there are a couple that are kind of uh, on and off again, and in the show they're still on and off again, and like always sort of there for each other kind of thing. And it is quite funny how they've kept that going that these poor lads are just kind of I say poor lads they've just they've just decided to go along with the the fact these girls kept drawing them. And there is, I mean, this one is heavily rammed with references to the more recent seasons, as yeah. you can imagine. Yeah, so, so I mean, I'm um, I'm pretty much caught up now, so I might start that soon. Have you um, seen all the Coon and Friend episodes? Uh, yes, I think so. I, 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 I remember, has there been any more since since it first happened? Because I watched, I watched the, when they first started doing the Coon and Friends. Has there been any more in between, like, uh, Ben and... and... They, they did the whole thing of been, like, revealing who Mysterion was and... I think I watched them ones, yeah. I think I did watch them ones. Yeah, I think Cartman ends up Tutaloo, the demon. Yes, yeah, like, I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cthulhu, Cthulhu, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I do remember that. He did, yeah. I, see, I saw all that stuff, yeah. So that that's, okay, cool. So I am up to date then. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and in this season, they do a, a, an episode that came out just the week the game was released. Related so, um, to it, yeah. Pretty much, anyway. Cool. Well, I will get caught up and start that probably in the next week or so. Hopefully. Cool. So so comic books, then. Comic books. Yeah. 
Um, I've just been continuing my journey through Stray Bullets. Talked last week about how I'd um, read through the entire Uber Alice edition thing. Um, yeah. I then moved on to volume six, Killers, um, which I just downloaded off of Comixology. It's eight issues, read all that. That was still very, very good. Um, then I've re-downloaded all of the Sunshine and Roses, which is volume seven of that um, stuff, and bought all the new ones. And I'm now working my way through those. And it's just so very good. If people are still ignoring me when I'm telling you to read Stray Bullets, stop ignoring me when I tell you to read Stray Bullets. It's brilliant. This is... This is another Giant Days. This is another Wicked and the Divine or whatever really? these books okay. that I've convinced you all to read very over however long periods of time. This is this is that kind of quality we're talking about. It's excellent. And I'm a little bit sad that I'm nearing the end now. Issue 30 of Sunshine and Roses came out this week and I'm up yeah. to about issue 22 of that run. So it's going to be done by the end of the weekend and then then wow. I'm going to be sad. I'm currently ignoring you just because I've got such a big pile of stuff to read. Um, stray bullets, stray bullets, yeah. stray bullets, stray bullets. Does it come in like a smaller form than that gigantic book then that you've no. got? No. What do you want a small... Well, you can buy each of the individual volumes, I think. Only because but... I only because I don't. I didn't read The Walking Dead Companion because it was too fat and the chunk is Perhaps holding. Perhaps you should read. Uh, grow some muscles, Pab. It's not the weight of it. It's just that it's just too bulky to hold and like have all this. Perhaps we should get some full size adult hands, Pab. Yeah, I might need to. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Do you want to borrow some grown ups' hands? Yeah. Is there an ebook yeah. version of it anywhere? Yeah, you can download it all on Comixology. Hmm. Or do you need help holding your iPad up with mm. your tiny, no, tiny I'm okay. hands? I'm right with an iPad. That might be a more sensible way to do it than that gigantic book. Uh, it's all in black and white as well, so you're not missing out on anything by by yeah. having it digitally rather than in colour. You're not missing out on beautiful artwork or anything like that. It's just black and white, sketchy type drawings. There's nothing special about the artwork. It's the stories that make it so good. Hmm. It's definitely one to think about. It's one to read, Pav. Don't be think about <laughs> it after after you've read it. Then you'll have plenty to think about. Until then, more action, less watching South Park. Yeah. Tell me about it. I've, I've, I have read next to nothing this week. All I have read is the the annual that is DC New Talent Showcase for 2017. Ooh. Which is, I think, I, I think they've been doing it for a while. This it's just like it's just like a, a, the start. It's the time of year where annuals start coming out, isn't it? Mm. Um, and it it's just an annual based on like upcoming talent in in DC. And they're just giving them like short stories to do in the in this book, and like just like sort of highlighting these these people that are probably going to become quite prominent in their future. So you've got like there's a story about with a with a uh, the Red Hood and um, who's the Batman with a yellow suit? I can't remember his name now. No, I can't. He was in All Star Batman, wasn't he? And towards yeah. the end of yeah. Thing he's run, he doesn't have a proper name, name, does he? I think he's, he hasn't been given a proper hero name yet. I don't know. I was like, I was like, I don't know who this is. I have no idea who it is. I know who the Red Hood is. Yeah, he's like, just a, a kid. He's he, he plays into some of the dark metal story and stuff like that. He's a kid that his mum was murdered by the Joker. I think Batman's uh, taking. Him. Yeah, so there's, there's there's one of these stories where where um there the the Red Hood and this guy's in in like a training room, sort of like a what's the the, the X Men room that they've got? You know what I mean? Are they fighting versions of Clayface? Yes, that's again from All Star Batman and all of that. Oh, well, yeah, sort of, yeah, that's right. Um, and then there's a story on. Let's have a look. K- Katana, that's Katana, isn't it? Yeah, from the Suicide Squad. Hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a story on Katana. There's a story from on Deadshot. They've, they've gone for like much more like out there characters that like you wouldn't. You was like, I don't know. You know, they've not they've not been given like the the reins to do to do like the the top marquee characters, but they've been given a chance as uh, Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy wants a good story again. It's kind of cool, uh, but only like what six to eight pages long each. It's not like massive. Um, but it's still been all right. It's still like it's a good way to showcase your upcoming writers and what have you. Uh, 
Is this other fella? I can't remember his name. Is it Doctor Fate? Doctor Fate, someone we know. Oh yeah, yeah, he's the one who just kind of appears at big events, doesn't he? Normally, I don't um, know. he's like Z- Zatanna's um, I don't know, boss. <clears throat> Possibly, he's, he, he, there's a whole story on him. And then to cap it off, just to like, just to like give you an incentive to buy it. There's a there's a a Wonder Woman uh, story by Scott Snyder. Who's the bat? Who's the Batman writer, isn't he? If the um, All Star Batman and the metal stuff, isn't he? Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed that. I just enjoyed p- picking through this like couple of stories each time for every day this week, sort of thing. Just just having a quick flick through. Um, and it's getting yeah. to Christmas now, but, so go on, cheat, go. I enjoy Snyder's writing like immensely. I think it's really good, but I equally think I find him a bit confusing because he's chosen to write the likes of Batman. Yeah, and chosen to write them very uh, mystical and magical and you know sci-fi like and have all these like fantasy elements to it, and you sort of think, why doesn't he just write one of the other heroes where that's kind of what they're about? Batman's meant to be more like a, I think, I think millionaire, the, <laughs> like Iron Man style. Iron Man's not supposed to be. He does obviously fight well, aliens. And I think stuff, the, but... the rebirth stuff has become the mainline stuff, hasn't it? With Tom mm. King, isn't it? It's Tom, it's Tom King, isn't it? Yeah, like, maybe that's why it works so well. Um, but Batman it's having like, its whole, yeah, yeah. I mean, the big thing that kind of before I really like dark metal and I'm enjoying it immensely, but there's a whole thing in that about there being. Um, four different tribes in like ancient whatever uh, race they were, and it's like they've got the the bird tribe and the something else tribe and the whatever else tribe, and then the bat tribe, and that's all played at the bat- Bruce Wayne becoming Batman. And I'm thinking it's kind of trying to retrofit his his law, isn't it? And it's well, I, I think it might be the fact that they don't want necessarily. Because I don't, I don't read the up to date with the current Batman stuff. So I don't know whether it is, but I've, maybe they think they don't want. They said to him, "Do what you want, go absolutely crazy with it, because we don't want you to come in line, sort of thing, with the rebirth stuff, like you know, as like straight, straight, like." It's surely, if the they numbers. make, us, I don't know how this sort of thing works greatly, but surely, if they say, "Oh yeah, he's Batman because he's from a," you know. If they tweak his law slightly and they say that that's all part of some massive cult, and whilst he, they're sort of saying he still made the decision to be, a, you know, Batman because he was scared of bats when he fell down a well, but equally they're sort of saying that it was pre preordained, it was his destiny, and he didn't really have much of a say in it. It was kind of a prophecy that he's unfolded. And I'm thinking, but to just be a scared millionaire. A billionaire, sorry, wasn't he? Oh, I'm really, he's just a, a billionaire who's, who's who's got anxiety issues. Mm, I don't know. I don't know with that one. But I've done, so I've done with that one now. I've ordered the the Christmas annual, the DC Christmas annual. Um, so that should come next week. Um, so next week I'll be reading the Giant Days Holiday Special. Ooh, can you... Send me a link because I keep trying to find it to get it on my Christmas list and I can't find it. I I managed to get it in a store. Ah, uh, bum. I I bought a physical copy because I didn't have it online. Yeah, when I type in like you Giant Days e- Holiday Special on Amazon, it just You'd doesn't. You'll be able to come. get it on eBay. You'll be able to get it on eBay. I can't yeah. add. Well, I can add eBay to my Amazon list, but I can't be. I can't rely on the sellers selling it in time. Oh, that's a good point. I don't know. I I managed to get the last copy in 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 the store. I was like pretty chuffed that I managed to sneak in and get one. Um, so I'll read that next week. Sorry? You stole it? No, I didn't steal it. Right. I managed to just get the last copy. Right, lucky that I snuck in and took it. I was like, yeah, right. I managed to get in, like, because I went into one shop and went, oh, we've sold, we've sold out of them. They might have them, but the, the other one at Forbidden Planet, I was like, right, okay. So I nipped up there and I was like, right, okay, popped in. And they had one copy left. I was like, right, I'm having that. So mm. um, I'm, I was curious because I've only read, like, the first... What is it? Two or three, two or three volumes of it. I think in this, that it surely can't be. I wouldn't read canon, this. So I, I wouldn't think. read. Yeah, it must be. I would be. Go I'd back say. and read last year's holiday special instead. Yeah, yeah. Read this one without reading the story. Um, yeah, it fits. It usually fits in to what's going on. Or it did last yeah. year anyway. Yeah. Right, okay. Raging spoilers, but like as I said to you before, I'm you're, pretty you're... sure they're. Yeah. I... 
year where I was. I'm sure it's something like that. And you were saying they were still in their first year when you were reading it. So. Yeah, 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 definitely. I might have to yeah. stick that in, stick that in the box and hold it for until I'm up to date. Then interesting Three characters in it that you haven't met yet. Yeah, yeah, partners and stuff. Well, I'll do have to do with just a DC one for next week then. You will. Yeah. Anyway, Sheepdog, have you read anything anything new? Um, do you know, I'm trying to think. I, as I said about the Dark Metal, I was carried on with that. Um, the, I'm, I'm halfway through two separate Sandman standalone stories. I'm, I'm midway through the Death story, midway through Sandman Overture, and it's broken me because I feel like I shouldn't read one or the other before I read the one or the other, and... I've just been reading pages here and there and then convincing myself that I shouldn't. Um, so, yeah, I haven't really read any, anything in anger um, other than the um, the dark metal stuff. Splendid. Um, are we done then, boys and girls? We yeah. are done. Yeah, we are Splendid. Still... Well, in that yeah. case, um, on your way out, everybody, make sure you head by my Just Giving page, as I mentioned before, justgiving.com slash Lelujo 2017. It would be splendid to just throw even more cash on there because throwing cash towards charity at this time of year gives you that warm glow inside. And we all I like a warm feel, glow. I feel like there's a warm glow inside. I, mean, I donated earlier. That's because you're drunk. Yeah. That's just the booze. <laughs> Could well be. I have had some. Um... You're a disgrace. Um, in, in other news, you can follow us on Twitter at MGUK Podcast or you can follow me at Lelujo. Um, can people stop following me? Because uh, it's getting a bit scary walking down the street. But I am on Twitter at RB6K. And I'm at Pab1986. And Pab's home address is... Um... <laughs> and there's also, there's also a Facebook page, um, which is at facebook.com slash maturegamerpodcast. Or youtube stuff, lelujo.fm. And it's all great and splendid. And you can then see my Advent series where I'm going around standing outside Christmas trees that Sheepdog apparently hasn't seen yet because he's a monster. Got to watch my Christmas series, Sheepdog. Why do you um, stand outside them? Because I can't stand inside a tree, can I? Yeah, why, well, why did you feel the need to let us know you weren't standing inside them? Because I could stand inside them, but I don't. Okay. See? Simple. See you next week, boys and girls. Have a good week. <laughs>